So let's back, unpack this a little further. Uh, the, the two major things that I want you to remember are the two types, if you would, of polyunsaturated fats. These are animal fats, they are essential, and they are divided into two good guys, but one is better than the other. So one is called omega-6, the other one is omega-3. And if you could uh, put in a summary statement the difference between omega-6 and omega-3, I would summarize omega-3 as reducing inflammation in your body, whereas omega-6 actually can help rise inflammation. It also helps to create some of the hormones. So many times I hear uh, omega-6 is evil, omega-3 is great. And I don't, I don't really like them to do that because they're both essential. You have to have both of them. You cannot make them. And when, when, although omega-3 does reduce inflammation, and we're going to go through some things that omega-3 does predict, I would contend that the worst part about um, labeling good and bad for omega-6 and omega-3 is they think that you should have no omega-6, and, and that's just not true. So as we uh, separate out, you're going to see some really wonderful words here, but one of them is that omega-6 has two types of um, subfats, if you would, gamma linoleic acid and then the conjugated linoleic acid. Uh, you'll never hear me say those again. Those are just omega-6 fats. What you will hear, and you will see a lot of this on labels. So if you were going to take notes or you're going to take a screenshot, I'll, I'll show you the one I want you to take in just a second. So omega-3... Uh, has uh, alpha linoleic acid. ALA is what you'll see it abbreviated on. Uh, if you go to your, <laughs> if you push pause and you go to your um, medicine cabinet or your supplement cabinet, uh, you can say when when alpha linoleic acids are present, uh, you'll start to see some health advertisements like, oh, our source of omega three is uh, ALA, and they probably won't write out that Latin name. There are two subsets that ALA breaks down into, and uh, it's based on the shape of them. I don't, I'm sure you don't care, but I care. So it's, it's abbreviated EPA, but uh, the title of it is Icosapentoic Acid, and there's a reason it's abbreviated. <laughs> I think it's actually called Icosa. Icosapentoic Acid, and the other one is Docosa hexa, Hexonic docosa hexonic acid, anyway, abbreviated DHA. The key here is that if you write down EPA and DHA, these are the two omega-3 fatty acids that are where most of the literature comes from and most of the people monitoring uh, 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 health benefits for these uh, two very special kinds of fats come into play. On the ketogenic diet, where animal fats are really what we are encouraging people to eat from because uh, of the polyunsaturated fats, but also because uh, of that low inflammatory markers, uh, you will find that uh, there's people like me who were born on a hog, hog farm and beef farmer's daughter, and I easily eat a lot of omega-6, but wait till you see my results that they were dismal <laughs> when it came to uh, the omega-3s. So this, uh, this is just a quick screenshot. What I really want people to remember is omega-3, ALA is the, is the mothership, but it's divided into EPA and DHA. And those are the things you should be looking for on the backside of a supplement bottle. So a couple of the things I like to show folks is that um, if you measure the amount of EPA and DHA in red blood cells, you can, uh, you, you can uh, take that as a percentage of the total fat. So um, in this person right here, uh, their percentage, there are 64 in that blue box, th those strings uh, are different types of fat. And the three red ones are the good ones, these EPA and DHA, uh, so, but there's only three out of the 64, which brings the percentage down to 4.6. Now the danger is, is uh, that's pretty close to what my number turned out to be. <laughs> So for other folks that have been around the channel a while, you know that I did use hemoglobin A1C is another way that we measure inside your red blood cells how, how sticky they are by how much sugar they've been associated with. And I love that one. It's not actually one of my most popular uh, videos, but I love it because as I teach people about 
uh, hemoglobin A1C or watching to see why it's so important to get that hemoglobin A1C. In my, in my clinic, I love them below 4.6, uh, at 4.6 or lower. And the reason why is because as your red blood cells uh, get impacted by sugar, they can't carry oxygen as well, which is why my diabetics with really high A1Cs, they have strokes more often, they have um, infections more often, they lose fingers and toes, uh, and it's because the oxygen carrying capacity inside your red blood cells has fallen victim uh, to being saturated in sugar. And when the sugar, when the glucose is there, the oxygen can't be there. So that's one way we study red blood cells. This is a completely different way that we use the same cell and we get to measure over the last 100 days, which is about how long a red blood cell lasts, how, have my, uh, how has my eating been? Because the fats used to make my red blood cells came from what I consumed and I can look at what I consumed in that test. All right, so let's do a couple more little things here. Omega-3 and inflammation. This is the part where in the last week I put a ton of time studying what is it about um, inflammatory markers and infection that I wanted people to know. Uh, so there is a correlation between these omega-3 index, and again, mine was really bad, uh, and the multiple inflammation markers found in this Framingham study. Um, so Essentially, the higher your omega-3 index, the lower your inflammation. I had a couple of other calls from the community uh, where, where friends and family, or family, family of friends, <laughs> is a better way to say that, had a stroke. And instantly I wanted to like drive home this point that I was going to be talking about on Sunday saying the flexibility of those red blood cells are how you would have prevented a stroke. That has to do with how many trans fats are gonna be found in her red blood cells, and how many omega-6 and omega-3 are gonna be found in her red blood cells. This is a, a study, it was 2019 that this, actually this was 2015, uh, the other one I'm gonna go through is 2019, where they looked at omega-3, the same little thing that I had, I did live a couple of uh, videos ago, and it said, uh, we can predict who's going to have a heart attack better with this little prick of your finger where you do not need a doctor's prescription, you can send off through that website, they'll mail you the kit, you can prick your own finger, put your red blood cells on that circle, send it back in and get your report. And you do not need a doctor's prescription to do that. When they looked at the results of people to, uh, who had omega-3 uh, reports, so omega-3 indexes, like, like we're gonna go through in a second with me, uh, they could see that it was a predictor of inflammation, meaning the higher your omega-3, the lower your inflammation markers. And I, I really think it's important to sit still and realize that they took into account several things that made it really hard for this study. If they would have done this kind of a study when using LDL cholesterol, you would never have LDL cholesterol predicting anything. I mean, it barely predicts something now. But they took into account that if they were a smoker, they gave them consideration. If their blood pressure was high, they gave them consideration. If their body mass index was heavy, they gave them consideration. They paid attention to total cholesterol, which I don't care about, but I do care about that they gave them credit if they had a high, a high or low healthy cholesterol, HDL. They looked at their triglycerides. They gave them a little uh, a smudge room for with, if they were diabetic, if their glucose was high, if they'd taken an aspirin in the last three weeks, if they were on hormone replacement therapy, or if they were on a statin. Now, there's several others, but those were the big ones where I'm like, if you want to make it difficult for this test to predict inf uh, inflammatory markers or inflammation, then uh, you would put all of those in the formula. And if it's still separated, you should have a lot of confidence that this test predicts who's going to have a stroke, who's going to have a heart attack. And there were several studies that, uh, that showed this, but I, I think this one was the one that helped me get to the punchline. So the, there's that study again, just reminding you, this isn't, this is, you can go look it up if you want to look at the source at the bottom of the slide. But what I think is, um, <laughs> is helpful is these eight biomarkers. Now, I want you to notice that R, when R is negative, it means there's an inverse correlation. And the further away from one you get, the more you can be confident that there was a real separation. So after they took in all of those factors, they said that there are, um, there was a urinary uh, iso 
prostanes. I don't even know what those are, but when I looked them up, I was like, okay, you're right. That is an increased inflammatory marker. So the higher those were, the lower your omega-3. The higher your omega-3, the lower your urinary isoprostanes. Um, the lipoproteins that predicted both the size of them and their activity. Uh, interleukin-6, which is really important for what my dad went through this past week. Uh, your body's ability to send out the message that there's a bad infection and then kill the infection without killing the patient. Uh, so again, a really important hormone that talks between cells saying, hey, uh, we need to take care of this, uh, this infection. And the inflammatory marker does not work very well if their omega-3 had been lower. Or yeah, if their omega-3 had been lower. So C-reactive protein, again, very common. I've talked about that several times on the show. Tumor necrosis factor was also an important part of that. And uh, the other two are smaller, but uh, were, were part of this. Please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.